Good morning and welcome to our online service from St Mark's Kensal Rise. Last week Will was in the beautiful Surrey countryside. This week I'm down in glorious sunny Sussex while I'm staying with my father. One of the things I've really appreciated during this really strange and weird season is that wherever we are we can gather to worship together whether that's in our homes in Kensal Rise whether it's in Surrey, down in Sussex, up in York, where I have been during lockdown. Wherever we are, we have come this morning to gather together to worship the living God. And I've really appreciated that and find that quite exciting, that actually we are God's family. We are all one, wherever we are. We're continuing our series today um, on Jesus is Enough based in Paul's letter to the Colossian Christians. And Anthea is going to be talking to us this morning about recognising that those times when we feel so inadequate in our faith, that so often the truth is right in front of us. I'm certainly looking forward to hearing what Anthea is going to be teaching us this morning. We're here this morning to worship the true and living God the God in whom we can trust with our lives, the God who is unchanging, even in the midst of these crazy and uncertain times when every day things seem to be changing. But God never changes. As we come to worship, let me pray for us. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are the same yesterday, today and forever, and for whom nothing is impossible. We pray that you will come and meet with us this morning by your Holy Spirit. Draw us closer to you and teach us more of what it means to be your children. We ask this in your name. Amen. As we begin our worship this morning, Tim is going to lead us in that wonderful song, One, Two, Three, Jesus is Alive. So jump up, get ready to join in the actions as we sing out together the wonderful truth that Jesus is indeed alive. Kyle will then lead us in a song that reminds us that God's love never fails. He never gives up on us. However we're feeling, whatever we're going through, God is always there. And sometimes I think we all need to be reminded of that. But first, let's get singing. One, two, three. Jesus is alive. Over to you, Tim. Everyone, he loves everyone. 
Okay, church, let's sing Your Love Never Fails. those powerful words my debt is paid there's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love Jesus has paid the price for 
all the wrongs we've done and for all the wrongs we will ever do by dying on the cross. But as we sang in our first song, Jesus is alive. He rose again from the dead. He is alive today and that means that we can come to him and ask for his forgiveness. We can come and say sorry and know that the slate will be wiped clean and that we will be forgiven. There's nothing that can separate us now from his great love. Let's pause for a moment and think about those things that we've done this week that we're not really proud of. And instead of trying to justify them or push them out to the back of our minds, let's humbly come before our Lord and God and admit that what we've done is wrong and say sorry. We say together the words of the confession that will come on the screen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought, word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sin. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. Receive the forgiveness of Christ. Amen. It's time now for our church family news. As usual, we're going to be um, having our coffee over Zoom at the end of this service. So, um, so make yourself a coffee, grab a biscuit. Please do come and say hello. I'll be there and, uh, and I'd love to see you. I so miss seeing all of you at the end of our church services. Um, and so, uh, so this is a way that we can say hi, can connect with each other and just check up and see how each other are doing. So even if you haven't been before, you just pop in for just a few minutes. The Zoom details for that are on the screen now um, or are on the church website. So look forward to seeing you there at the end of the service. Also, there are people who are ready and willing to pray with you if there is something that you would like prayer for. Um, again, that's on Zoom, a different Zoom. Um, so the details are on the screen now. And again, they are also on the website. So if you're carrying anything that is concerning you or you'd like to pray for anybody else, then please do come along at the end of the service and there'll be people waiting to welcome you and to pray with you. Fairly shortly, um, we're going to stop showing our services on Facebook and on YouTube. And the only way that we will be, um, be streaming it is through our website. And that way we know that all of us are watching just through the one medium. So um, do have a go. If you haven't tried that way yet, uh, maybe next week, um, go onto the church website and click on the link and that will, uh, that will send you to our recorded service. Um, you can still write comments in the box below so we can still feel that though we're staying connected. So we'll let you know over the next few weeks when we will be stopping the, the streaming on Facebook and YouTube. I would love you to put in your diaries Sunday the 18th of October at midday. It's a really important day in the life of our church at St Mark's. It's a day when we're going to come together to look back over what's been going on over the new year and to nominate people to stand for our church council, those who will be in spiritual leadership of our church. Yes, it is the annual APCM, annual parochial church meeting. Don't switch off, don't go and make your coffee. This is not boring, this is really important and an opportunity where we can all come together um, to share in what's been going on. To be a part of the PCC, which is the Church's Council, is a real privilege and it's an opportunity to share with people and to pray about what is God leading us as a church into, what is on God's heart for St Mark's Kensal Rise. And it's a real privilege and opportunity to be able to share with others and to seek God in our decisions. 
If you are interested in being on our PCC, we need seven more people to join us this year. If you are interested or if you would like to nominate somebody, then the way to do that is um, detailed on the website. In order to vote, um, you need to be on the church's electoral roll. And the electoral roll is basically a register of all of us who have decided that yes, St Mark's is our spiritual home. This is where we want to be, this is where we feel that we belong and where we want to serve God. So if you're not on that list yet, but you see yourself as yes, St Mark's is my home, then, uh, then again, go onto the website and um, there'll be forms on there that you can fill out to, uh, to join the electoral roll. Because we'll also be voting for our fantastic, amazing and wonderful church wardens, Sue and Vivian, for them to be able to serve us for another year. So any information that you need is on the website, but if you're unsure about anything to do with being on the PCC, nominating, voting, um, being on the electoral roll, then you can also speak to Kelly, to Will, Anthea, Sue or Vivian. So that's Sunday the 18th of October at midday. It'll be on Zoom and the Zoom details for that also will be on the website. Anthea and Corey have been with us at St Mark's for um, just over a year now and uh, what a strange year it's been for Anthea in her first year of ministry with us but what a blessing she has been to us. Thank you so much, Anthea. Well, next Friday, the 25th of September at eight o'clock, Anthea is being priested. And this is the next step in her journey to becoming a vicar. Now, normally we would all pile down to the service in order to support Anthea in this next important step. But in these days of social distancing um, and limited numbers, Unfortunately, we're not able to do that, but the service is being live streamed. And so wherever we are from our homes, we can still join Anthea for that important service. The details for that um, streaming will also be on our church website. So that's next Friday at eight o'clock, um, the live stream for Anthea's um, service where she is ordained priest. And then next Sunday, there will be our nine o'clock, 9 a.m. shortened Holy Communion service. And this will be the first communion service that Anthea will be taking, having been um, ordained priest on Friday. So that's gonna be a really important service for her. Um, so if you would like to go and join her and be a part of that service, then you will need to sign up on the website because numbers are limited. So I think for next Sunday, there's gonna be a real race um, to see uh, who can get signed up. So do go onto the website and sign up if you would like one of those places for our nine o'clock um, Holy Communion next Sunday. Please do be praying for Anthea during this next week as she prepares for that important service and that important next stage. And we're gonna be praying for Anthea as part of our prayers shortly. We come now to the time of the peace. The risen Lord Jesus came and stood amongst his disciples and said, peace be with you. That same risen Lord Jesus comes and stands in front of each one of us this morning and says those same words. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. You've got 30 seconds in which to write comments in the box or to greet those in your households. So go. Andy is now going to lead us in our prayers and then Marianne will read us our Bible passage for today before Anthea speaks to us. Let us pray for the church and for the world and let us thank our Heavenly Father for his goodness. We pray for an end to the ravages of the Covid pandemic and for all those who try to mitigate its consequences. 
We pray for the world leaders who have to make hard decisions which have consequences for human suffering and, and death. We pray for them to have clarity of vision and grasp of the issues, openness to admit problems and readiness to take hard decisions to deal with them. We pray that each individual will play their part in taking responsibility to ensure their behaviours will help curb and combat the spread of the disease rather than facilitate it. We pray particularly for the vulnerable groups, black and ethnic minorities, the poor and deprived, and the elderly, that they may be under your special protection. We pray for all caregivers in the community, care homes and hospitals, and give thanks for their commitment and compassion, and pray they will all get the support that they need. At this time we particularly raise to you our schools and universities and their staff and students. We pray for safety from infection, and that new ways and opportunities for study will be found compatible with wise infection precautions. We pray especially for little children going to school for the first time, struggling with the added difficulties and uncertainties of COVID, and for their teachers and their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the peace of the world. We pray for a recognition that war is a sign of human failure and that there have to be better ways of resolving problems. We pray for all the innocent victims of war, refugees, especially children, and those the destitute, those victims of abuse and exploitation. We raise up to you the work of There is Hope in Malawi, and Innocent and Florissa who are leading for you under hugely difficult circumstances, and also other refugee organisations. We pray you will give hearts of compassion to well-off nations, that we will be ready to help generously, remembering that you love a cheerful giver. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the Church and give thanks for the freedom of worship that we have in this country. We pray for our national Church leaders, that they may be salt and light in our political processes, pointing the way to integrity in government and politics. We pray for the leaders of this Church here, and especially for wisdom, as to how safely to use our church buildings. We pray for Will, leading us under these extraordinary circumstances, for your guidance and for your peace for him. This Sunday we pray especially for Anthea, whose priesting takes place on Friday. We pray that despite Covid, this will be a very special time for her and her family. We give thanks that you have called her to this ministry and for the wonderful spiritual and temporal gifts you have given her. Please bless her in her ongoing ministry and enable her to bear an ever richer crop of the fruits of the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for the sick, not just those with COVID, but for all those suffering from other devastating illnesses. We pray particularly for healing for Caroline's father from his badly scalded feet and wisdom for those treating him. Let us in a moment of silence raise to the throne of God those known to us who are ill or housebound and lonely for any reason. We also pray for those who mourn loved ones, especially those who have not been able to grieve normally because of COVID. In the silence, let us bring before our loving Father those known to us who have lost loved ones, remembering God constantly promised consolation to those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us end by praying as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 to 23. That's Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 to 23. 
The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behaviour, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, let us pray. Holy Spirit, please speak to us this morning as we reflect on your word. Lord, you know how best to speak to the hearts of your people. And I pray that you speak through to every one of us this morning. Amen. Good morning, everyone. So we're continuing on our theme of Jesus is enough, which we started last week and will continue for this term. And I'm going to jump straight in because I've got a, a lot to get through. So looking back at what Paul has given us, in, given us insight into the incarnations from our reading in Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 to 16. As he says, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for everything was created by him in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. So we understand that not a drop of divinity was lost in Jesus's transition to humanity. And though Jesus appeared human and he was human, he was also actually God, divine, fully human, fully divine. And the fullness of God, that's every bit of God, took up residence in the body of Christ. And Paul continues in verse 19 to say, For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. Now, Jesus may have looked human, but for those nearest to him, they knew that he was more than human because he was prone to divine exclamations and actions. Every so often, Jesus allowed his divinity to take over and manifest itself. So when we wonder if God understands us, we can know that he does. When we wonder if God listens to us, we can know that he does. And when we wonder if God can actually understand and comprehend the challenges we face as human beings, that we can know that he does because the promise of he, he in hebrews chapter 4 verses 15 it reads is that jesus our high priest is able to understand our weaknesses jesus understands our physical pains and our spiritual struggles because he had a human body and he did spiritual battle with the evil one whilst living in this world so let's just think about the struggles that we face and how Jesus faced the same. Are you troubled in spirit? Well, Jesus was too. In John chapter 12, 27, it reads, Now my soul is troubled and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Are you so anxious that it's taken over your life? Jesus was too. 
in Matthew 26, verse 38. He says, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Are you overwhelmed with grief? With all that's happening with this pandemic, we've had to suffer a lot of grief where, where loved ones may have passed away. And Jesus suffered grief too. In John 11 verse 35, it says, Jesus wept. Have you ever prayed with loud cries and tears? Jesus did too in Hebrews 5 verse 7. It says, during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Jesus was so human and yet he was also so divine. Jesus was so human, he could touch his people, but was so mighty, he could heal them. Jesus was so human, he could use earthly words, but was so heavenly, he spoke with authority. Jesus was so human, he could blend in unnoticed for 30 years, but was so divine, that he could change history and be unforgotten for 2,000 years plus. If we take a look again at the promise in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathise with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way as we are, yet without sin. Therefore let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. Now you may ask how do I approach the throne of grace with boldness and in that instance it is a moment where you have to make the choice to do so. It is a choice that we make to approach that throne of grace with boldness. In Romans 12 verses 1 to 2 it reads, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Again, you may ask, how do I renew my mind? How do I make that choice? How do I step to the throne of grace in boldness? And I want to go through some tools that I think can help us to do this. Firstly, remind yourself to pray. We need to communicate with Christ. He is fully human and fully divine. Now, usually when we go turn to somebody for help or advice, we like to know that they can relate to what we're going through. We usually take on people's advice if we know that they can relate and understand the situation that we are in. And we've just heard how Christ Jesus was fully human and fully divine, how he understands and can relate to anything that we are going through. So my question this morning is, who do we turn to? I'd like you to ask yourself, who's the first person that you turn to when you have a problem or when you're celebrating, when you've had good news, when you've, when you've had a joyous um, event happen or whether you're going through pain or if someone's betrayed you, who's the first person that you turn to to share that information with. This first person that we turn to should be Christ Jesus. And then the tool, this tool, in the tool of communication, in the tool of praying, I think for us all, the tool of turning to Christ first and foremost is a tool that we need to remind ourselves of and get in the habit of doing 
turning to Christ first. You know, are we in relationship with Jesus? Are we love with Jesus? Do we need to ask Jesus to show us how to love him? And you know, with that instant, where you may need to wait on a loved one or somebody else, the person that you turn to, may you need to wait on them. With Jesus, it would be an instant thing. You can turn to Jesus where you may have to wait for others. I mean, Paul reiterates this by saying how Christ should have the supremacy in their life. In verse 17, he says, he is before all things and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead. So that in everything, he might have the supremacy. Who do we turn to? First. Secondly, we can remind ourselves of the promises in scripture. There are many times that we feel down and low where the enemy likes to put things in our head, but we have the word, the promises of God that we can rely on. For example, you know, the Lord is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in our times of trouble. Psalm 46 verse 1 you know, scriptures that we can draw on when we need to lift ourselves out of situations or feeling low. Being able to meditate on verses, using them as a strap line in our life. A key tool is to be able to have the word of God on our lips so that when that enemy comes with those lies in our head, we can really draw on the promises that God has given us. And have them in our heart at all times so that we can know that where our mind wants to go a different way, we can draw it back to God. Draw it back to Christ who prayed the price in full for us on that cross. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we really can use the promises of scripture in our lives, especially in times like these, where we may see that and thinks to ourselves that there is no hope, where the world is telling us, you know, that a second phase of lockdown may be looming and, you know, our health is in jeopardy because of this virus. We have the promises in scripture that we can rely on to revert those lies of the world and be in the world, but not of the world. Moving on to the next tool, which is reminding ourselves to remain at peace and in the presence of God. Now, through this pandemic, that has been key for me, actually being intentional about placing myself at peace in the presence of God. And how do we do that? Through praise and worship. When those times when you feel like you can't praise the Lord or you haven't got, you know, the energy or the will to pray and seek God or worship him or praise his name, those are the times we have to make the choice and do it anyway. Really force ourselves to place ourselves in the presence of God in praise and worship. Paul says in verse 21, once you were an alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present your holy in his sight. Without blemish, and free from accusation. Christ dying on the cross has freed us from any guilt, shame, accusations, anything, all those things that we put and carry, those burdens that we carry that stop us from entering the presence of God or thinking that we cannot turn to God. 
Those are what the enemy tells us we can't do. And it's when we draw into the presence of God in praise and worship to find that peace that resides and surpasses all understanding. That is when these are the tools that we have to remind ourselves of in the times when things get difficult, when things get challenging. We need to remind ourselves to remain in peace and in the presence of the Lord, praising him in every stage that we go through. Thirdly, we have to remind ourselves of the times when Jesus had answered our prayers. And these are the moments where we can reflect. Now, I have to admit, I'm not the best at reflection. But there come the tool that has helped me recently, I would say, is reminding myself of the times when Jesus has answered my prayers. So where things may seem impossible, where things where you may not, may not see light at the end of the tunnel, where you all hope is lost. Remind yourself of the times when Jesus had answered your prayers. In that reflection, you are then able to remind yourself that God can do all things, that even when things seem impossible, Jesus can come through. In Colossians 1.17, it reads, and he is before all things and in him all things hold together. So that reliance and reflection we can have to stop and just take stock of where God has worked in our lives, where God has done the impossible in our lives. Really reflect on that and remind ourselves of that. Fourthly, we can remind ourselves of the God you serve and the sacrifice Jesus already made on the cross. So when our faith seems to be depleting, that is when we need to activate it. We have to visualise things, believe things in our mind in order to bring them into fruition, you know, um, Habakkuk says write the vision and make it plain imagine in your mind you have to imagine and believe things in your mind so so in that sense we need to be thinking about what it is we are placing in our mind are we thinking positively about our situation are we saying to ourselves that you know I'm not going to claim this sickness I am healed in Jesus Christ how are we thinking about our situations are we putting that positivity in it? Because if we, we have to believe it and conceive it in our mind first in order for it to come into fruition. Paul tells us that if you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Now, with all that Paul went through, he had rely, he relies on his faith and knows that he has been forgiven for all what he had went through. He didn't hold on to those burdens or the lies that the enemy told him about whatever he did in his past and how he cannot now have faith in the Christ that died for him. So let go of the things of the past. Hold on to your faith. Activate it. Reimagine the things in your mind. Speak positivity over your life. Be careful about the words that we use because of the power. The Bible speaks about the power of our tongue. Speak positivity of your life. Start to believe and envision in your mind what you want your vision and what you want out of life, the positive things, imagine them in your mind, conceive them in your mind so that you can achieve them in the physical. Now, just to round off all of the things that we need to remember, these last four tools that I've just mentioned, there's one thing that stands firm across all four of them, 
and that is to be consistent. Be consistent in your relationship with Jesus. Paul says, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Through Jesus' blood shed on the cross, he has reconciled us back to God. And in order for us to be able to live in this world and know the hope and faith and promise we have in eternal life through Jesus Christ, we have to be consistent in our relationship with him. Jesus was fully human and fully divine. He can relate. We need to be consistent. Remind ourselves in prayer. Remind ourselves in the word. Remind ourselves in the way that we reflect on how God has worked in our lives. Remind ourselves of our faith and what we believe, what we know to be true. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 reads, Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labour is not in vain be steadfast be consistent jesus has already paid the price in full be reminded of the promises and make that choice use the tools to really allow yourself to be consistent in your relationship with god growing together in the love of jesus christ 1 John chapter 2 verses 15 to 17 reads, Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father but are from this world and this world is fading away along with everything that people crave but anyone who does what pleases God will live forever this verse is for such a time as these especially in the past few months that we have had God the Father has sent his heroic son to come and rescue us. When Jesus takes over your life, he gives you peace and comfort of knowing your sins are forgiven. The demons of guilt and despair, the evil one, always desires to remind you of that. But you are given a new life to fight against this world. It is a battle. And what a gift to have Jesus as our King. Now today Paul instructed us that we have everything already. The answers are in front of us and Jesus is present to us right now, this very day and every day of our lives. So let us be consistent. Let us remind, remember the tools that we have, the things Jesus has given us, that we can turn to him and know that Jesus is enough. Amen. Let us reflect now as we sing, in Christ alone, my hope is found. Let's sing in Christ alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength.
my song This cornerstone This solid ground Firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love What depths of peace When fears are stilled When striving cease My comforter My all in all Here in the love of Christ I'll stand Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on Him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live There in the ground His body lay Light of the world by darkness slain Then bursting forth in glorious day Up from the grave he rose again And as he stands in victory Since curse has lost its grip on me For I am his and he is mine Brought with the precious blood of Christ No guilt in life, no fear in death This is the power of Christ in me From life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny No power of hell, no scheme of man Can ever pluck me from his hand Till he returns or calls me home Here in the power of Christ I'll stand Till he returns or calls me home you Anthea and for your encouragement to see what Jesus is doing right in front of us and how he encourages us and is there with us and for us. Thank you. Just a reminder about coffee and prayer. The details for those Zooms will come up after the service and are also on the church website. And don't forget the live stream next Friday at eight o'clock for Anthea's special service where she is ordained priest. And now for the blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those that you love now and always. Amen. It's been great having you with us this morning. Take care, stay safe, have a good week and I look forward to joining with you again next Sunday. Goodbye.